Nick. I'm here with first updates now for a Behind the Bumpers clip here at SMR. We're in week one, and I'm here with 6517 Sono Robo here to talk about their awesome robot. We're going to talk intake, their indexer, their shooter, and their trap scoring mechanism. So really excited for this Behind the Bumpers interview. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, so let's talk about this drivetrain. What do we have going on here at the bottom of the robot? Yeah, so we um, we have the typical um, three inch max swerve, swerve modules. Mm -hmm. um, but what we decided to do um, so that we could go a little bit faster this season is um, slap some Neo Vortexes on there. And, uh, allows us to get uh, two or three more feet per second. Mm -hmm. uh, and cool. this is opposed to, what were you guys using last year for Swerve? Uh, we were using the, the large Neos. Yeah. Right, right, right. And uh, have you found a performance increase this year? Yeah, yeah, we seem to be a lot a lot faster. That's awesome, that. okay. All right, let's move on to this intake. So how are you guys putting notes into this robot? Um, so uh, here, Jacob, if you wanna feed this note in. Um, so we have five uh, rollers mm -hmm. that are rubber um, that cover uh, polycarb tubing that we machined ourselves. Um, and then it's all powered by two Neo Vortexes. Um, and it just sucks it up straight into the uh, indexer. We have poly belts in there to power the bottom rollers. Yep. Um, but yeah, Jacob, if you want to fit a note. That is just instant. Like that. That's yeah. amazing. Um, and then we have the limelight blank to let us know that we have a note in our rope. And that's for the drive team, uh, correct? Drive team, yeah. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah. And are you guys using this limelight to detect April tags or reflective tape? Yeah, so that tape? one will be uh, the one we use to detect the April tags for trap. Awesome. Um, oh, just in ourselves okay. On the, on the okay. Chain. That's amazing. Yeah. All right, well, let's move on to this center console and intake. Um, how are you guys shooting this note? Hello. Uh, so basically, we have a wrist back here that's geared 75 to 1 uh, using just a regular Neo and this will articulate back and forth, so it'll articulate all the way to an amp position. Yep. Um, but this indexes, you can see we have these freely coasting. Uh, this one's slightly faster than the other, just to give some spin. Okay. Both sides are independently controlled. Right, right, right. Keeps right. the shot more stable. Okay. Um, we have a little bit of a deflector here, actually. This is for our trap mechanism. We use a PTF E-tape, and so it bends out of the way when we're indexing, and then it springs back when we want to do trap. Okay. And. Have you found any issues with this throughout the season breaking or is it flexible enough to handle what you guys are looking for? Oh yeah, this polycarb, unless it's being compressed, it's extremely tough. Um, we haven't had any issues with it yet. Okay, that's awesome. Well, let's look at this climbing mechanism because you, not a lot of teams are trapping, especially in week one, right, 1.5 here at SMR. But how are you guys getting up on that chain? So um, we have an elevator that is completely rigged with timing belts inside the tubing. Mm -hmm. So it is really, it takes up uh, not much space at all. And so um, it can extend all the way up to about 22 inches. So the wrist comes up, then the elevator goes up. That is beautiful. This is where it grabs onto the chain. We just drive onto it, mm -hmm. gets the hook. Then it does centering. It centers itself directly onto the chain using automatic centering. With April tags? With April okay. tags. Awesome. And then, and then after that, we bring it down to these uh, mechanisms, um, these static hook mechanisms. Okay. Um, it uses a rotary latch, and so when the when the carriage comes down, it actually presses the rotary latch and it releases this to grab onto the chain effectively right. for the transfer. Uh, if you want to, yeah. So you can see him activate down here. And then after that, we just go back up. That's when we extend back up to the trap. And then we're going to feed into the trap. <laughs> so, yeah, normally this would be pressed up. Yeah, normally, yeah, this would be pressed up to hold the trap open. Mm -hmm. Because the polycarbonate is so sticky against Correct. the trap, we have to have PTFE right. to make the note slide in a lot easier. Okay. And 
do you guys, are you guys looking at any improvements to this bot? I mean, you're really hitting so many check boxes off of this game, but any improvements you're looking for in the future? Um, yeah, with our, with our break, we plan to uh, make the shooter and intake more stable. Um, other than that, maybe we have a modification to the elevator to make it a three stage. Okay. Um, is there anything else you guys want to add? Sort of stealing this from Landon, but we were thinking about switching to flexes on these. We have them on the shooter. Uh, one of the advantages in comparison to a Spark Max is that you can pour 80 amps of current into them mm -hmm. at peaks. Uh, obviously not constant, but uh, we don't have those in our sword drive right now, so we get an even more powerful sword drive. Um, and the reason we were thinking about third stage is possibly being able to shoot under the stage. Uh, we've seen some other teams do it. I don't believe they're trapping, but it's kind of something that we might look into in the future. In terms of your code, what kind of autonomous and different code features besides your A-Port are you guys running on the field? Um, so we have a four-note um, hard-coded auto mm -hmm. um, using Path Planner. Um, and it is is not using April tags and autonomous. We had a little bit of struggle with that, so mm -hmm. we, we veered away from using that. Okay. Um, and then we also have a, a two note auto that is for not the amp side but the source side um, that we go to midfield and grab a couple notes. We we score two and then we bring one back into our zone so we can shoot immediately out of auto. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. This is an absolutely incredible robot. And coming out of Hopper last year with the Creativity Award, I mean, that some of this is definitely seeing here again. Such a creative and cool design. So thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. And best of luck at the rest of us tomorrow. Thank you. Appreciate it. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.